today's program I'm, I'm very excited about. Um, we talk about, you know, needing to change our ways, that the system of capitalism may be broken. Um, you know, there's been a uh, wave of embracing ESG, STGs, all these wonderful things, but very little concern is being taken to the actual education of leaders. Um, and how do we go about this? And actually here in Japan, we've got one of the great pioneers not just of theoretical work on education, but actually rolling up his sleeves and uh, doing things. Uh, setting up the Institute for Strategic Leadership uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, how many graduates do you have now from 2000. there? There's 2000. about 2,000 graduates all over uh, the Fortune 500 companies here in Japan, a very powerful and strong network. And the genesis, as I think Nora Sensei will explain, um, is a bit of a frustration with the sort of American MBA style approach of educating uh, leaders. Now he did teach uh, at various um, you know, prestigious uh, American business schools, came back to Japan, set up the Institute for Strategic Leadership, and more recently set up uh, Shizenkan, which is again a more holistic uh, leadership education uh, you know, institution. So without further ado, Noda Sensei, it's a great honor to have you here. Uh, very excited and looking forward to your remarks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jesper. <laughs> thank you, Jesper. I was overwhelmed by your energy. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. I'm um, Tomo Noda. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, good, should be good evening. Uh, thank you so much for your kind introduction. You can speak on behalf of me. You would be a better speaker. Jesper uh, has been a friend and a core member of Shizenkan too, so he knows better than I do, perhaps. Uh, but the, uh, if you allow me to uh, speak for a while, uh, in, uh, the, let me share what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. Right. Uh, briefly, briefly, uh, repeat who I am. Uh, the I uh, spent the first 15 years of my life, 25 to 40 years, as a researcher, educator. At that time, I was academic. Uh, academics, and I publish a journals, uh, uh, some, some of them, and have a business review kind of things. And I was a faculty member of London Business School and INSEAD in France, Fontainebleau, and INSEAD Asia in Singapore. And I'm the product of American MBA. I went to MB, uh, MIT and DBA in Harvard, from Harvard Business Schools. My wife is an MBA from Harvard. So we are the, as a product of American uh, business school education and uh, business school education. But as Jesper says, somehow I was not satisfied fully with American business school education. And I came back to Japan at the age of 40, and I became an entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur in the field of education. And uh, I left academia, uh, academics, uh, uh, with commitment to never return to academics, <laughs> ever, and uh, started my own institution called ISL. And supported by many, many uh, corporate executives, social leaders, I was so fortunate. I was supported by 300 corporate executives in Japan, social leaders, uh, including Tony Kobayashi of Fuji Xerox, uh, who passed away, uh, and uh, Kakutaro Kitashiro of Japan IBM, both of them are chairman of uh, Japan Association of Corporate Executives, Kezai Do Yukai. Uh, and we explored alternative approach to MBA, we call whole person leadership development approach. Uh, we as a business person, but at the same time, we as a citizen of the society, we as a parents of children, we as a son or daughter of uh, parents, and we as a global citizens. So well, multiple roles and responsibility we should wear. That is whole person leadership development approach. And we were fortunate to have 2,000 graduates. Uh, many of them became the CEOs of many Japanese corporations. And at the age of 55, I was, uh, decided to come back to the, uh, the global world. Uh, the 40 to 55 years old, I have been concentrating in Japan. But the, at the age of 55, I, we said, why, can, why don't we make a, a modest contribution to the rest of the world from Japan? And we established Shizenkan University, uh, officially approved by Ministry of Education in Japan. And we tried to renew a global paradigm of business and leadership education. And that is who I am. Uh, Shizenkan, 
uh, Shizenkan, it is a university, but pretty, pretty, pretty university. Uh, it's very small size. Uh, we are located in as a Takashimaya building, uh, five minutes walking distance from Tokyo Station. And uh, these are our, our graduates, our students. So very international, coming from 30 countries. And we only have 80 uh, as our students. But the Shizenkan, the name means ultimate goodness school for those of you who do not understand Chinese. But it is coming from Chinese classics, Great Learning, uh, Shizenkan. That is our name. Uh, my, uh, our problem awareness uh, with regard to education and leadership development today, uh, this is our uh, the, uh, the founding spirit. At this critical juncture in the history of humanity, we strive to realize a peaceful and prosperous future with, as always, as a, as a like-minded uh, people across the world by pioneering a whole-person management leadership education approach from Japan and the East and the East. That is our uh, as a commitment, uh, determination. And why this kind of approach is necessary? That is the question for you. And my answer is this guy. This is my friend who passed away last year, Creton Christensen. Uh, from Harvard Business School. Uh, you may know his book, Innovator's Dilemma. Innovator's Dilemma. We discussed Innovator's Dilemma and ambidextrous management in the classroom of business school many, many times. But ironically, I personally feel that even though we discuss Innovator's Dilemma in the classroom of business school, I, I, ironically, it might be us, the business school educator, who may be suffering most from this innovator's dilemma. That is my observation. And the, the awareness of the status quo of uh, leadership education in the world. Why should I say that? Because I personally feel as I love Western business school approach, and I am the product of Western business school approach. But in the meantime, I sometimes feel that Western business school approach is a kind of epitome of 20th century capitalism. Why do I say that? Because in 20th century <coughs> economy, we expect ever increasing growth, mass production, mass consumption. And in order to deal with this mass production, mass consumption, we have hierarchy, centralized management, a hierarchy and layers, middle management, frontline management, uh, this is a, the, uh, the uh, driver for executions. And uh, we have the wonderful, Adam Smith says, division of labor, increased productivity. And uh, in order to manage the, uh, the, this complex organization, we have a command and control type of approach, carrot and stick management. Uh, Japanese love the global, the being, being global, Japanese love the word of globalization. A Japanese loves the word of global standard, global standard. And we sometimes say business school approach is global standard. But for me, sometimes I feel that MBA represents master of being American. <laughs> Unfortunately, the reason I say is I went to uh, INSEAD, Europe. Uh, because I'm not fully satisfied with the Japanese economy. I was not fully satisfied with the American economy. So I thought there may be a third way in Europe, Europe. And I went to London. I couldn't find the, any third way. I went to INSEAD. And the INSEAD in Fontainebleau, I have a conversation with Professor Ikujiro Nonaka, very famous as a professor from Hitotsubashi, originally. And uh, Nonaka sensei told me, Tomo, this business school, in Fontainebleau, France, is more American than American business school. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, 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 I may be overemphasizing, but the, uh, somehow we, we all use Harvard business school cases, and uh, we discuss a lot about value creation in classroom. But the, if you ask what is value, we the implicitly assume value is shareholder value in business school, even today, even today, despite the fact that we discuss ESG, SDGs. So that is the why I feel that uh, American business school approach is a kind of answer to the need of 20th century capitalism, in a sense. Uh, all, all the people know that we, we assumption have changed 
uh, in, in 21st century. We are concerned for sustainability, emergence of prosumers, uh, small-scale local production for small-scale local consumption for the sake of circular economy and makers' revolution. And uh, instead of uh, hierarchy, centralized management, uh, the people prefer more networking and hierarchy is replaced by lateral network of more independent individuals. And what's the motivation for people to collaborate? It is not the carrots and the stick. And it is rather the collaboration based on empathy and trust. That's uh, the, the trend in among the Z generation, Z generation Z. And fundamentally, value creation, driver for value creation is no longer large organization. Value creation shifted to uh, the entrepreneur who pioneered zero to one. And uh, these entrepreneurs has a more holistic perspective uh, needed than middle management in organizational hierarchy. And fundamentally, uh, the America used to be a central center of the world, but pendulum sw swinging back to Asia, China, and India. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, India, Jap India, Japan, uh, China has a different civilization, uh, uh, more or less. So uh, this is our problem awareness. And uh, this is a problem awareness I had 20 years back and uh, the, when we discussed and, uh, the uh, idea of Shizenka, this is uh, the uh, discussion we have with friends and colleagues uh, in Japan. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to create alternative to uh, traditional American business school approach, American business school approach. And we say uh, B, D, I becomes S, Z, Y, Shizenka. We used to call Z, but after uh, the Russian invasion to Ukraine, we, we cannot use Z. So uh, we changed to S, Z, K, but it used to be Z, Z here, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we do not deny business school approach at all, at all. And we, we capitalize on the tradition and strengths of American business school approach. So we started with business school approach. Uh, business school is, American business school is good at uh, quantitative, logical, strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. That is a huge advantage of American business school approach. Finance, uh, marketing, strategy, uh, I myself is a strategy faculty, strategy faculty, and uh, as accounting. And whatever the hypothesis we created, we need to uh, verify our hypotheses. And the Western Business School approach has a, has a, gives us a huge weapon for entrepreneurs and managers to verify the, the hypothesis they develop. But not necessarily uh, they are uh, allowing us to create something totally new, innovative from scratch. Otherwise, uh, McKinsey, uh, McKinsey, as a BC Boston Consulting Group, as a consultant, can have a business model by themselves, can be a, as a billionaire. Uh, but uh, the uh, management consultants are good at uh, analyze and verify some kind of hypothesis. That's a starting point. Uh, we tried to combine business school approach with design school approach, design school approach. Mm -hmm. So uh, ethnography, prototyping, storytelling, uh, that gives us uh, the, uh, the, uh, some kind of framework to uh, the envision uh, the, new, uh, the new business, uh, new organization, new community, new community. But sometimes uh, business school approach tend to be incremental, incremental. Doesn't allow us, because it is, we are observing the, the consumers, their wants and needs. And sometimes consumers do not necessarily know what they truly want, that Steve Jobs said. Uh, consumers doesn't know what they really want to do, uh, what they really want to have, until they are shown the, some, some product or some services. So we tried to combine some kind of singularity university approach of innovative school, innovation schools. And the importance of innovation school is how we can deal with discontinuous innovation, AI, digital literacy, uh, decarbonization revolution. So uh, creativity, aspiration to aim high is the most important aspect, we believe, in 21st century. So we tried to combine these business school strengths and design school strengths and the innovation school strengths. 
together, together. Uh, but we need integration. <coughs> so we tried to integrate from the perspective of business policy, business policy, either entrepreneur or top managers. Always we ask people to put themselves put themselves in the position of entrepreneur or top management. We never ask them to be a middle management or a functional experts. We always asking, what would you do if you are entrepreneur? What would you do if you are top management? So we tried to cultivate professional skills to deal effectively with transformation and innovation. So this is the main, our main focus, main focus. But this is not enough, uh, we believe. Uh, we are at a critical juncture of human history, and we not only we do not need to uh, we need uh, somebody who go beyond the professional professional entrepreneur professional manager, and we need leaders for people and society people and society. So this is our uh, unique uh, uh, characteristics of our education approach. In addition to helping students, participants, to cultivate professional skills, we keep asking them, uh, why do you do this? What is important for you? What do you do? Uh, uh, what, what do you do? For whom? For what you do? Why? Why? So uh, the, one of my frustrations with the American business school approach is we are good at helping people equ equip with weapons means, means, but we do not necessarily ask the objective uh, of their endeavor or challenges. So we focus more on why questions rather than how questions. And in order to do that, we extensively uh, rely on liberal arts education, liberal arts education. We have 18 permanent faculty members, very small boutique business schools, but the, we have uh, the, the Western philosopher focusing on Hegel. We have an oriental philosopher focus on Chinese philosophy. And we have a sociologist, sociologist, social system theory. And we have a historian, and we have a, the adjunct faculty in biology, uh, kind of. And we keep asking who, who, where we are from, who we are, where we are heading for. A uh, famous Gauguin picture, Duben no Kusson no Uzaron no kind of questions. That's we keep asking. And uh, we want to develop leaders, not the managers, leaders, managers, who can deal with transformation and innovation. And leadership need to deal with uncertainty and risks uh, in, in, when uh, leaders challenge with uh, transformation and innovation. And we need to take action uh, without knowing the right answer. Uh, in the face of uncertainty and risks. And in that uh, kind of challenges, motivation doesn't work. Uh, somebody asks you to do, and based on carrots and stick, ask you to challenge with transformation and innovation. It doesn't work. And more importantly, some, something uh, inside of us, inside of us, willpower, uh, passion, aspiration, coming out of ourselves is important. So most important part of leadership education, we believe, is asking who you are. Uh, why do you spend your life? What's the purpose of your life? And who you are. And once we understand who am I, uh, who I am, and once I understand where I am going, naturally people take actions without being uh, told to what, what, we should, what we should do. And in doing so, we heavily rely on Asian tradition of self-reflection. Uh, we have meditation and we have the yoga and the Zen uh, session, Zen session. But in addition to that, we have many psychologists and coaches working uh, together to help <coughs> participants reflect on themselves and asking uh, who, you, who they are, who, why they are doing what they are doing now. And at the end of the day, uh, uh, the character matters. We strongly believe that the most important part of leadership de de development is uh, character development. Character development. Uh, at the end, uh, we are human beings and we are helped by many people. And why people help us uh, really depends on our character, we believe. 
So empathy, integrity, and sense of responsibility for others and society is the most important aspect of leadership and leadership development, we believe. And in order to do that, we ask participants to uh, develop deep understanding of humanity, humanity, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, deep understanding of human existence. We are very complex animals, uh, some dirty part, some beautiful part, but the, we are the whole person. So appreciating the uh, duality of human beings, that is the most important part of leadership education in my mind. So uh, we tried to redefine MBA. Our degree is MBA. This is officially approved by Ministry of Education. But our degree is MBA in Design and Leadership for Societal Innovation. Societal innovation. So some people say, almost like we, uh, Tomo, you are almost actually completely denying the MBA. MBA the, because the MBA is originally Master of Business Administration. Master of Business Administration. Uh, instead of business, we have societal innovation. Uh, administration, instead of administration, we have leadership and design. But uh, we personally believe that this could be the MBA in 21st century. Uh, MBA education started 200 years ago. Uh, in Harvard Business School and Wharton, uh, so, sorry, the Wharton, yeah, yes, uh, 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 the Wharton Business Schools. If founding fathers, founding fathers of business school are living today, creating MBA from zero ground, this could be uh, MBA, we, we hope, we hope, we believe. Uh, we are very small business school in Japan. Uh, and de novo startup, but uh, we do not want to become big by ourselves. Rather, we try to be a catalyst for change in global business education. Uh, why do I say that? <coughs> because uh, we cannot change our global business school uh, paradigm by ourselves. So we are collaborating with some other like-minded institutions in the world, world, particularly IESE Business School in Barcelona. There's a Catholic school, and uh, the, uh, the, their credo is professionalism, integrity, and the spirits of service. So uh, even though I'm the graduate of London Business School and INSEAD, and I, we, are, I, we are very close to IMD, Gianfranco San Manzoni, president of IMD, is my friend, but we uh, chose IESE as a strategic partner. Uh, we do everything together with them. We also have uh, the partner in Gurgaon Delhi, another boutique uh, business school in uh, India, uh, who are helped by many Indian conglomerates, Tata, Aditya, Berla, Mahindra, Mahindra, and uh, they are strongly founded in Indian spirituality, Indian spirituality. And we also have a, a, a partner in Brazil, FGB, uh, in Sao Paulo, uh, we have a center together, Japan Brazil Center for Sustainability. And I forgot to include one more uh, institution uh, without in intention. And we are uh, closely working with Israel, a press center for peace and innovation, for or moonshot innovation, uh, to solve global <laughs> SDGs issues. And uh, the, this is a kind of a symbolic uh, project we are doing with ESA. Uh, Franz Hoykamp, a German dean, of YESE and I initiated Future of Capitalism project. And basically, the last year we have 12 uh, schools participating in this project. And we are now talking with uh, Singapore and uh, the England, uh, the universities over there. And hundreds, hundreds of students participate in this course online, but online and visiting various places in, in the world meeting with the top leaders and government leaders and grassroots change makers to explore the future of capitalism and future of business enterprise and new roles and responsibility of business leaders. And eventually we are supported by the many executives including Paul Paulman <coughs> of Homa Unilever. Uh, I myself met with him two weeks ago in uh, Barcelona. He's coming to Japan uh, next week uh, next week. Uh, so let me show you the uh, five minutes video of uh, what the course looks like. 
what the course looks like, and you may feel this may be the one of the projects we are undertaking, and this may be the way we try to explore new capitalism, new business enterprise, and new leadership development. So we are starting from Tokyo. So everything is virtual. And that you get a harmonious, successful society when a few wise people are making choices for everyone. Um, we believe in noisy democracies. And At the starting point, everybody should get equal opportunity. We always mention, and it's not like a controlled democracy, but there needs to be a balance. Opportunities need to be created for an honest person from different profession to come to the political and regulatory mechanism. Good to see you everyone from different uh, parts of the country. Corruption is the biggest disease, more than COVID-19. We need to make that call continuously, amplify that call to our leaders. But then what do you do to be a happy human being? I think you have to help those that have not been as lucky as you. Money needs to circulate, circulate. Because if money remains in the hands of uh, one person or few people, deteriorate. That nobody wants to work for a fossil fuel company anymore because they're destroying the planet. I believe in, um, in activism. We don't have a choice, right? We have reached planetary boundaries. So even if we try to fix through political reforms in Congress, honestly, we would not necessarily be able to address the causes. It depends a lot on, on, on the society, on the civil society, on how people actually engage with those reforms and, and with those changes we need to do. The great challenges facing democracy and capitalism in Brazil. I think we have to figure out the data issue. The biggest mistake that I think has historically been made in technology is that we're so good at being creative about what can go right, and we're not good at being creative about what can go wrong. There was a, a inherent commitment to responsible leadership and responsible entrepreneurship. So this, if it is left only to uh, academic sessions and classrooms while it's a good starting point, it will not end up anywhere. It has to become a mass movement. Uh, accelerating collapse of uh, natural systems is the disappearance of pollinators. A company has to live with the community. Without the community, we can't survive. And so the more we can orient ourselves to recognize that we are a part of a, a broader society to which we have commitments, I think the better off we'll be. The, the, the Barcelona part is missing because Paul, Paul Ma appears later on. Uh, Paul, Paul is a kind of supporter, and we are working uh, closely with him uh, to change the paradigm of business schools uh, education a little bit. 
a very small activity, very small activity, uh, and uh, very entrepreneurial activity. Because we are here in Japan, Tokyo. I didn't speak English until 25 years ago. Uh, first time I spoke English was at the age of 28, 28, 30 almost. But uh, with a big aspiration and with big hope, and we tried to collaborate with like-minded individuals across the world and institutions. So we don't engage in institutional arrangement. We visit and knock the door of individual one by one, one by one, and try to be uh, creating the, the, the community of like-minded individuals yep. for change. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so you are creating holistic individuals. You are creating people who are good at administrative work, who can get things done, but who are also focusing on um, you know, the bigger issues, um, focusing on self-reflection. Maybe your MBA should be called Master of Bold Action. <laughs> but we're in Tokyo. Japanese companies are world famous for breaking their recruits, um, that you, after four years of playing at university, uh, you join one of the illustrious Fortune 50 companies in Japan, and for the first six months, for the first year, the entire course is worse than joining the Prussian military, where in boot camp you get broken down to become Mitsubishi man or Nomura man or whatever it is. So talk to me a little bit about, you mentioned your frustrations with the American model of leadership, shareholder maximization, in, 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 to put it in another way. But talk to me a little bit about the frictions that you encounter here in Japan, because it's nice to talk about Asian leadership ship style. The reality on the ground um, sure. you know, is something that creates salarymen, um, that creates people who follow rules, who follow orders, and uh, you know, where the focus is on Kaizen and not Kakshin, so on incrementalism rather than breaking through innovation. Talk to me a little bit about how your mind, in, with what you've just talked us, where Japan fits in, Japan's leadership education in the real world of corporate Japan. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Jesper. You are right. The, we have a huge problem in Japan, uh, particularly as in, in, in terms of education, in terms of leadership development. Fundamental problem for Japanese education, Japanese society, Japanese uh, the, uh, uh, companies, business, the Japanese, Japanese economy, is that individuals are not autonomous, independent, independent. And uh, we, we cannot blame Japanese uh, because Japanese environment mm -hmm. uh, are not really good at developing some autonomous, independent individuals. I went to Tokyo University uh, law, faculty of law. Why do I go to Tokyo University? Do I want to be a lawyer or a judge? No, because Tokyo University faculty of law was the best in Japan. So uh, my mother, parents, father asked me to go to Tokyo University because that's the most prestigious university. I became a bank, uh, IBJ at that time. <laughs> Why I joined IBJ? Do I want to be a banker? Never, never. I joined IBJ because IBJ at that time was second largest market capitalization company in the world in 1989. And that's the most prestigious business enterprise in Japan at that time. Mm. So again, my girlfriend wanted me to go to IBJ. <laughs> IBJ. Why do I go to MIT, Harvard? Do I really want that? Do I really understand the, the MIT and Harvard? No, I went to Harvard because Harvard is Harvard. The, that's why I'm saying is I am as an epitome of Japanese society. <laughs> we choose our career not based on our passion, aspiration, our will. Rather, we are responding to the expectation of others. Mm. others. Mm. That's a fundamental challenge, not only in Japan. Maybe South Korea, very, very similar. And to some extent, India is also similar. Mm -hmm. If you see the movie called Three Idiots, Three Idiots, 
uh, Indian boys need to be an engineer, Indian girls to be a doctor, medical doctor, kind of the paradigms. So Asia, particularly in Japan, South Korea, uh, are not really good at developing autonomous, uh, independent uh, individuals with free mind and aspiration. Mm -hmm. And that's a disadvantage. That's why we focus on leadership self-reflection mm -hmm. and asking uh, Japanese, South Koreans, and Singaporeans, and Indians who you are, wh why do you do what you are doing? So that's the biggest disadvantage. Mm. But in the meantime, uh, Western approach too much focus on individual freedom, individual freedom. Asian or tradition focus more on relationship. We are nested in the human relationship. Mm -hmm. That is our orientation. But think about this. We'll look at our human beings. We, are the, uh, we prefer freedom. We want to be independent. I personally do not want to live in some uh, authoritarian, capitalist, capitalistic uh, society. I prefer freedom. But in the meantime, we as a social animals, we cannot live alone. Without support, without help by others, we cannot live alone. So human is a very complex existence. We prefer, we love freedom, independence, but in the meantime, we cannot live alone. Mm. That's a duality, antimony of human existence. So we are not denying American approach. We are not as a, as a over-celebrating Japanese oriental approach at all. Mm. As a yin and yang, yin mm. and yang, both is needed. And uh, the last 100 years, we too much focus on probably individual freedom, individual freedom. But we do not need to resort to Chinese model of uh, the, uh, some kind of the system. That there must be in between, in between, more hybrid models. Mm. So that is why, why well, that is why personally believes, and that is most important uh, for humankind. Mm, mm, mm. Now, but but you know, again, sort of the focus on a Japanese corporation, right? I mean, you've got great support, right? Um, you know, there are, you know, multi-stakeholder type of leadership, you know, that's sort of an ideal that Japanese leaders, you know, hold very, very highly. And, and ISL and Shizenkan, you've got, you've got great support, right? But, you know, really, you know, sort of have, you know, in the last sort of 15, 20 years, have you had, you know, a couple of sort of aha moments or real success stories, right, where somebody you educated or somebody who went through the more holistic education uh, process who's actually been able to have an impact, right, on a corporation. Is something that comes to mind? Do you have a case study? Uh, Sorry, we didn't rehearse mm -hmm. this. I'm putting him on no, the no, spot. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, but as a, I'm Japanese. I was born in Kyoto. I was supported by many friends and mm -hmm. uh, relatives and colleagues in Japan. Yeah. So this may be the, uh, the what I'm doing in Japan. Maybe almost like efforts of beating the dead horse. Dead horse. <laughs> Over the past two, 20 years, I committed my life to rejuvenate right. Japanese business, Japanese leaders. But the reality of Japanese economy is we have a continuous decline, continuous decline. And we became very poor. Uh, because of Japanese weak, Japanese end. And I am overall not satisfied at all with the status quo of Japanese economy and society. However, 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 uh, even though the, the, the planet Earth will be as a, a, a disappear tomorrow, we, keep, we need to keep planting apple trees, as a, uh, Martin Luther. Uh, no, no, that is our commitment. So. Uh, we do not have, we cannot say that we have hundreds of success. Yeah. We have some success, some success, but many failures. Right. Originally, we focused to develop, uh, we, originally, when I started my activity 20 years ago, we said uh, we need to develop middle managers. We need to transform middle management to leaders. And we probably succeeded in uh, helping my participants awakened, mm -hmm. and they started taking actions. But top management didn't change, mm -hmm. and they miserably fail. And it is theoretically impossible to change the business enterprise from middle level. 
management, the company needed to change from the top level. Mm -hmm. Today, why we only focus on entrepreneurs at top management development is we do not want to repeat the failure mm -hmm. of middle management awakened uh, making a challenge within bureaucratic organization and making a suicidal efforts by themselves. So uh, that's why the, uh, uh, three years after our uh, establishment of YSL uh, 2000, we changed our focus completely yep. year 2003. And since then, we have been focusing, we say, only entrepreneurs and top management. Otherwise, we will not be able to change mm -hmm. this bureaucratic organization. Mm -hmm. Some succeeded, and uh, the, the, I hesitate to mention some real names, but the, one of the CEO of uh, the information technology company, communication network company, uh, Fujitsu, mm -hmm. he is doing extremely yeah. well. Yeah. He is doing extremely well. But in the meantime, uh, in the past, our graduates uh, becoming, became the CEO of a global cosmetic company in Japan, you, you, you know which one is, and failed, failed in transformation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry, that's I no, am no, no, not, but not you, you, clear. But, but it's interesting, right, because, I mean, it's a movement, right? Um, you know, you start educating people, it takes one generation. Um, you know, for there to be a positive impact. And slowly but surely, you know, you're seeing that. Do you think, you know, when you talk to your colleagues, right, uh, you know, other, you mentioned some of your partner schools, um, you know, what, how do they look, um, you know, at Japan, at Japan-style leadership education? Are they primarily focused on you, um, you know, and your model? Or is there something that Japan generally has to offer that they want to uh, incorporate uh, you know, into, into their curricula? Unfortunately, people do not pay attention to Japan much, mm -hmm. to be frank. And the way I communicate with my friends across the world, mm -hmm. I don't emphasize Japan at all, mm -hmm. at all. And the, we lost all uh, the charms. And so instead of referring to Japan, I usually refer to Asian value. Yeah. Asian value is not clear what is Asian value, <laughs> but the, somehow the Western value is clear, Christianity values, Christianity values, Asian values, but the, uh, uh, Buddhism, uh, Confucianism, Shintoism, Hinduism mm. have some kind of common mm. uh, the, uh, characteristics. Uh, monos, uh, the monosaic, mon yeah. monotheism, polytheism, polytheism, more focus on relationship and oneness, oneness, mother, mother earth, earth. That's I usually refer to, hmm. but never mention Japanese uh, tradition, Japanese uh, practice much. Yeah. But it is interesting, right? Because I mean, I think you know, for all our fields, you know, the the, the sort of the Japanese way, uh, you know, which maybe during the bubble, uh, you know, was sort of wow, you know, Japan is number one, um, you know, that has sort of been mitigated, um, you know, for the right reason, for the wrong reason, it's irrelevant, but it has to become more holistic, um, and it's interesting that you that you emphasize Asia. Um, before I open it up, um, you know, one final pivot from my side, the Ministry of Education. Um, you know, people always complain and moan about the rigidity of the Japanese Ministry of Education. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit, because your school is not sort of a, a standard Japanese school. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about, you know, your frustrations and the good part about your battles with the, with the Ministry of, 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 uh, of uh, Education. Uh, what I'm really trying to get to, like, was it easy to set up this sort of, uh, uh, you know, social impact uh, enterprise here in Japan? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's off the record. This, it's, it's yeah, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Education doesn't speak I, English, so it's okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one day, I may write a book. Ah, when you, when you have emigrated. Okay, good. <laughs> so, um, as a, as a, uh, uh, let me, let me say one thing. Uh, Japanese education system, uh, we have a peer review system. Every five years, every seven years, we have a peer review, peer review. It's a, it's a clever way of uh, managing, regulating uh, universities uh, without government direct intervention, direct intervention. What happened uh, after peer review? Peer review is a cookie cutting, 
cookie cutting because we have a traditional business model. And peers, some of the other audience are coming from Japanese university, and they are uh, in the middle of, in, they are in the legacy of 20th century education, 20th century education. So 20th century educators are reviewing us, evaluating us under the name of peer review, peer review. So it is cookie cutting to the old models, old models. And I should say, accreditation, accreditation system, international accreditation system is very, very dangerous business. Mm. Uh, the uh, American accreditation, Western accreditation, we have a business school, have accreditation system. Accreditation means that in order to be accredited, we need to be a member of old leagues, old leagues. Mm -hmm. So I personally never want to receive any accreditation mm -hmm. from global institutions. We made it clear to everybody. And rather, we want to try to, to help mm -hmm. accreditation institution to develop mm -hmm. new standard, new mm -hmm. standard. So sorry that I can directly yeah, yeah. mention no, no. the Ministry of Education. But it is interesting because, again, this, this, this concept of the peer review and that, ironically, it is not the top-down bureaucracy, right, that forces the conservatism, but it is actually the peers, right, because they have legacy, they want to continue to extract rent, etc., right? So it's, it's, ironically, it's your Asian way, right, where you actually do have the network, right, um, and in, in, in some cases, as in this case, this can actually act as a restraint. Right. But peer review is not only Japan. The yep. accreditation system is also peer review. Yep. So if you, the, for example, the, the Waseda Business School, if they want to, I should not mention Waseda. Uh, sorry, that's actually, the Waseda, the, uh, the, we have many friends over there. Uh, any Japanese or Asian business school, if they want to be accredited, uh, they apply. Mm. And the, the dean of Brazilian Business School, Dean of American Business School, Dean of European Business School, fly to Japan, come to Japan, and evaluate yep. them based on their understanding yep. what the business school should be, should be. So that's a huge problem. Yep. So yep. everywhere, not yep. only in Japan. Yep. It's everywhere. a club system. Yep. Um, excellent. Any questions from the floor here in Tokyo? Please, Dozo, if you could very quickly just say who you are. Thank you so much. My name is Takehito. My question is about your leadership education. You mentioned about the importance of empathy and trust. Mm. And I mean also in the U.S. education, I know in the U.S. they teach the importance of leadership, such as MLK, JFK. And I also today saw the Mahatma Gandhi's picture in the slide. At your graduate school, what is the ideal leadership as a human being? Is there any specific symbolic leader you teach at your school? Uh, we would like to hear from your perspective. Thank you. My students usually ask Tomo, what is whole person management leadership? And uh, we usually said uh, that it is a, uh, the, uh, uh, it is a ideal, ideal models, and where, where I try to explain the ideal model, I say, it's a combination of uh, Elon Musk, Paul Polman, Mahatma Gandhi. Three characters in one, that is four person management leadership. <laughs> and uh, we will never be able to reach that kind of the goal. But we set up as a North Pole, North Star, North Star. So uh, the, the probably nobody will be able to ever reach perfect as a, as a leadership uh, statue, uh, status. But the leadership is a journey, lifetime journey. And we, all of us are in the middle of leadership journey, leadership journey. Where we are heading for, where we are heading for. That is a kind of four person management leadership. And I personally feel that my, uh, my personal desire is I want to be somebody uh, like the, after my, my, my death, my mother in the grave uh, re recording uh, her memory with me and proud of myself uh, as a son. That is, for me personally, uh, my leadership models. Um, I'm Brandon Posey from the U.S. Embassy. 
Um, and of course, we want Japan's economies to succeed, um, and, and startups are a huge part of that. Um, and we um, might be wrong, but we've noticed a lot of startups in Japan um, oftentimes don't scale globally. A lot of times they stay in the Japan market or sometimes just don't um, grow as fast as they maybe could. So I'm just curious what you think um, kind of like a foreign governments can do to support Japanese entrepreneurs that are already operating here. And would that mean helping to bring global accelerator programs? Would that mean uh, making, helping facilitate access to venture capital? Um, just would be curious what you think what the current Japanese entrepreneurs could, um, could do with foreign governments. Thanks. <laughs> That's a gigantic challenge. Yeah. And uh, you are right, Japanese entrepreneurs uh, pay too much attention to domestic market and mm -hmm. do not want to be global, except Yamada Shinjiro of Mercari. Uh, he tried to globalize their operation a much. Uh, I have a study group or monthly study group with Takni uh, in this uh, International House of Japan and with the, the Yamada Shinjiro Yamada. As a, one most important part is let them travel across the world. And uh, the original experience, exposure to global market is most important. So if some entrepreneur spend their younger days in uh, America or Bangladesh or Africa, uh, naturally they pay more attention to global world. So the, the, there's no, not so much education can do. Uh, experience is most important in my mind. So without seeing the, uh, the diverse world, people are not awakened. So I usually say to my, my nephew, my niece, I, I personally don't have children, so I tell to niece and nephew to go abroad, at least two uh, countries uh, in younger days, uh, junior, senior high school and college days. So my, my nephew, uh, went to Amsterdam and India uh, in his uh, college days. That's a, probably the most uh, uh, practical solution for them. for them. So maybe actually the internship, a scholarship for young uh, entrepreneurs uh, for traveling across the world. That's maybe. And this is one of the reasons we develop a Japan-Israel innovation network. Uh, I am, uh, next week I'm visiting uh, Jerusalem and uh, we have uh, several friends in uh, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and we are creating a unique platform, uh, leadership exchange platform between Israel and Japan. Uh, Japan. Japanese company have huge technology resources but doesn't have aspiration and entrepreneurship. And Israel people, uh, they have a small domestic market of only 7 million uh, people but the, the, from the beginning, they are thinking the global market, global, uh, global market. So interaction. Again, there's not so much things education can do. Uh, meeting with people, experiencing, uh, seeing rather than knowing is important, I believe. If I can chime in for 30 seconds, usually, you know, once you start a company, you don't have time for this because you're running the company, there's a thousand problems, you're working 24 hours, seven days a week, fighting fires. Um, so uh, to Nora Census, to underscore Nora Census points, get them in high school, right? Uh, get them early, um, you know, and that's where the exchange programs come in. Um, you know, once you have a company and a going concern and it actually works, what governments can do is actually encourage and sponsor mid-managers, right? So not the CEO, because he or she is extremely busy, right? But if you've got, you know, the CFO, right? If you've got, you know, the guy in charge of technology, um, you know, if you can switch those and, and, and foster these sort of second and third tier management exchanges uh, among startups, that I think would be extremely helpful. Not the top, because the top guy is extremely busy. Um, and doesn't have the time, you know, for uh, for doing that. That's just, you know, two cents, you know, since you ask. Uh, this is actually a simple question. Noda Sensei, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your for establishing uh, Shizenkan University. Um, this is in, with regards to your student population. Do you have students from the government sector, mm -hmm. or are they all students from the private sector? Uh, that yes, we are uh, the students from multiple sectors, intentionally, intentionally. Uh, in America, Yale University 
used to have a business school called MPPM, MPPM, Master of Private and Public Management, public management trying to combine public sector and uh, as a, as a business sector, private sector. And we are strong believer in multi-sector, uh, cross-sectoral sectoral collaboration. Uh, we have a huge challenge for sustainability. In order to deal with sustainability, in order to realize more as a sustainable, inclusive society, business enterprise cannot make uh, the challenge by themselves. We need to develop the capacity of intersectoral uh, collaboration. And my wife used to be a deputy mayor of Yokohama City. She's now in business uh, now. She's always going back to government mm -hmm. sector, business sector. I myself spent one year in Kennedy School of Government as a special student. So from the beginning, we are strongly advocating that in 21st century, if we want to develop leaders, we need to equip them with the capacity of dealing with different sectors. And we have the students from Ministry of uh, METI, METI, Economic and Trade uh, International, uh, uh, the, the METI. Uh, Ministry Min of e uh, Economy and International Trade. International Trade, International Trade. And we also have uh, participants from JICA. Uh, we also have participants from Personal Agency. And uh, we have many NGO sector students. We intentionally welcome 20% or 25% are non-business sector. Uh, this question is from Ide-san. Um, he says, I'm understanding that now the future of the world w where locals and the globals are merged demand, mm. dem demands leaders with high integrity, quality, and the so sense of human equity, sympathy, etc., rather than uh, capabilities of business management only. But those are invisible abilities to be measured easily. What points would you look at when evaluating such qualities of leaders? <laughs> Sorry, we cannot evaluate, we cannot measure ethics, integrity. And uh, uh, <laughs> but the, we do not teach ethics. We do not teach ethics. We simply ask participant to be a human being, human being. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, I, I am not a Christian. Uh, we, are, we are not judged by somebody else. At the end of the day, we are judged by ourselves. Uh, when we die, when we pass away, we recall our life. We recall our life. And we know that how much regrets we may have, how much joy we, we may have. So we basically say, at the end of the day, you are the judge for your uh, performance of your life. Do you want to be proud of, you, of yourself? If you want to be proud of yourself, and do whatever you think that you think it is right. You think what is right. Uh, that we cannot monitor, and we cannot measure. And even though, even among us, we have a dark side here, dark side here. And uh, simply assessment. We have many assessment. We have many interview. But assessment interview doesn't help at the end of the day. And Chinese classics usually say this is why. The, the, the leaders need to uh, the const, restore, re, refrain, refrain ourselves, control ourselves when we are alone, alone. We, in, we Japanese call it shindoku, hitori wo tsutsushimu. So uh, the, we can discuss ethics and integrity in classroom, in public, anytime, anytime. But it doesn't help at all. Fundamental resource test is how we behave when we are alone, alone. That's a Chinese classics, and we strongly believe that point. Sorry, that so there's no answer to no no way of measurement. And regulators and uh, the, many people want to measure measure, but th this is a problem of our society. Everybody says, "How do you measure? How do you monitor your the progress?" I said, "No, no, no. There's a something we will never be able to measure." because we humans are very complex animals. 
Uh, thank you, Noda Sensei, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, my name is Shige Kimura, and uh, as a confession, I am a graduate of the law faculty of the Tokyo University, and I joined the Ministry of Finance, stayed there for 30 more years, and I'm here. <laughs> okay, uh, so most of the questions actually I wanted to ask is uh, already asked, but the one question is, so I still maintain some good relationship with my kohai, or former colleagues who is still working in the government, Minister of Finance, Cabinet Secretariat, and the Mary. And they are good guys, middle class, or even the top guys. And uh, what kind of advice would you give to them when you, you have a chance to, to talk with them, 30 minutes? And uh, maybe they can be a leader, but uh, not just the leader as you imagine. Or, because they are in the government sector, they, there is little thing to do with them, but at least they can help such a leader to come up. So what kind of advice, if you are me, talking to my kohai, 30 minutes, and give them some advice on, uh, as to how Japan can have a good leaders? First of all, you as a top of the elites in Japan, the University of Tokyo, Faculty of Law, and the Ministry of Finance is the best of the best, the Ministry. And my friend Junichi Fukuda, uh, he a bit problem, but the, uh, had a problem, but the, I fully understand that. Uh, all right, oh, Doki, that's, we are the same age, we are the same age, all right. So uh, the simple question uh, you, I, ask, I ask, I give advice is, why you are doing what you are doing? You have only one, you have only one time life why do you commit your variable and 20, 30 years for your job, for your job? And if you cannot answer, if they cannot answer clearly, they better think something to change, something to change. And without fully satisfied with their job as a Ministry of Finance, these bureaucrats will never be able to help others. So before helping others, before developing leaders, uh, your kohai, your juniors, need to ask themselves, are they really uh, living up to the expectation of themselves, themselves? So that's I usually ask. This is why I left academics uh, at the age of 40. I keep asking why I am doing this kind of academic job. I only live once. Everybody live once. Uh, I'm Buddhist, but I don't live, believe in reincarnation much. So we only have to live, live life once. That, that's a the very, very the, uh, the sad, uh, the sad fact we have. But nevertheless, nevertheless, this is a reality of our life. So same for uh, the middle manager in the company, same for NGO people. I keep asking, why do you do what you are doing? We only live once. And so for those people who, live in, who work for government sectors, unfortunately, Kasumiga Seki, Japanese government sector, uh, lacks leadership by themselves because they are the product of Japanese society, Japanese education. They join Kasumiga Seki originally, your age, because Ministry of Finance is top of the top, top of the top. And over time, so some bureaucrats lost their own aspiration as a independent individuals. And without independence, without free mind, uh, we will never be able to tack with transformation innovation, innovation as a leader. Leadership deals with transformation and innovation. Management deals with uh, incremental change and Kaizen improvement. Uh, we are so good at developing obedient managers, not the leaders, with free mind. Noda Sensei, there's no better way to stop with these words of wisdom here. And, uh, you know, 
thank you so much for your pioneering and, and really relentless effort. I mean, he works uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. I have the pleasure of teaching one of his classes on finance. And, uh, you know, I always, um, we've been doing this for four or five years now, and I always walk away incredibly refreshed, uh, not just because of the challenges that uh, Nora Sensei gives in the interaction, uh, but also, and more importantly, from the students. Right? The environment that uh, you know, Noda-san is creating at Shizenkan, at ISL, um, you know, to really have the strengths of the individual uh, um, you know, discovery. Because we are all human beings. And falling into line, following the crowd, is something that comes very natural. Um, you know, to all of us as human beings, but to actually discover the inner strengths, uh, you know, to uh, discover, um, you know, what it is that you yourself want to focus on and then engage in a logical, in a constructive dialogue with your peers, right? Not to convince them. You're not a missionary, <laughs> right? You're not a missionary, but to give the environment to create the sense of um, you know, collaboration and the sense of shared discovery, um, and then to give the strength and background, right, so that you, know, you can actually fulfill your own path and thereby uh, you know, actually create genuine leadership there. So if you do have a chance, uh, visit Shizenkan. It's a spectacular space. Um, the students are very, very energized, as Nora Sensei says, from 30-some countries. Um, and the project on new capitalism, um, you know, obviously is globally encompassing. I mean, there's a lot of talk about new capitalism everywhere, um, you know, but here is something, uh, you know, where you can actually get involved and, uh, you know, hope that uh, we can continue this discussion at some point in the future, and I hope that you will engage uh, with Shizenkan. Thank you very, very much for coming out uh, early in the morning. Nora Sensei, very, very nice, uh, very, very good words of wisdom. Thank you very, very much. Again, Nora Sensei, thank you. Thank you, Esther.